scratch and burn. Hey everybody. Hey everybody. So tonight I am looking to discuss uh, J.G. Ballard. He's the guy that wrote Crash. His 1970 novel, The Atrocity Exhibition. Oh my god, I don't even know where to start. I don't even get this book. It's like, you know? I understand, like, where are my notes? Because without my notes, I'm lost here. So basically, he wrote this book as the result of dealing with the trauma um, of losing his wife, Mary, to pneumonia, as well as trying to make sense of all the violence that was going on during the 1960s. And that, of course, wasn't just the JFK assassination. That was just one part of it. The 60s, of course, as everybody knows, was a very turbulent time. Um, and so this is Ballard's attempt to, like, sort of figure his way through the madness. And I don't even... I mean, it, this book, oh my God, there is nothing traditionally novelistic about this, okay? It's a series of mini novels that are narrated by different characters who run by the name, like that start, all their names start with T. There's, there's Traven, there's Talbert, there's Talbot, and what's the other one? Where is it? Travis, that's right. Just like Travis Kardashian there, the punk rock billionaire. And um, it's a very difficult book to read in any kind of traditional sense. And I will read you an excerpt of that now. So just, okay, so here. This particular little section is going to be called The Persistence of Memory, which of course was named after the Salvador Dali painting. Oh, an empty beach with its fused sand. Here, clock time is no longer valid. Even the embryo, symbol of secret growth and possibility, is drained and limp. These images are the residues of a remembered moment of time. For Talbot, the most disturbing elements are the... Where... Okay, I'm lost. For Talbot, sorry, the most disturbing elements are the rectilinear sections of the beach and sea. This displacement of these two images through time and their marriage with its own continuum has warped them into rigid un and unyielding structures of his own consciousness. How the hell is that a story? How is that supposed to motivate somebody to read the next paragraph? I know it's about Talbot, and he is one of the focuses here. I was able to get as much from this book as I could. I think this book is more about how the mass media manages to get inside of our brains and sort of rewire them and cause them to sort of collapse in on themselves because of the ridiculous amount of misinformation that's being fired at us by the dinosaur media. And I think as of 2024, thanks to the COVID pandemic, we can all relate to that because as we know, Back when COVID was running hot, on Monday, the CDC would say to do this. And then on Tuesday, they'd say, oh my God, don't do what we told you to do on Monday. And then on Wednesday, they'd tell you to do what they did on Tuesday. But all they told you on Tuesday was to not do what they told you to do on Monday. So everybody very quickly got tired of COVID because none of it really made a lot of sense. So I like that because of the COVID pandemic, this book does make a little more sense at least as far as how we saw the, the, the media like attempt to manipulate us every 20 minutes. At the beginning of the COVID pandemic, they told us that the Christmas was going to be screwed because COVID was going to wipe out our toy selection. Like, really? You, like, really? And so in that sense, I can completely get on board for this, but it's really just, it's almost like, this is sort of a precursor to everything that Harmony Korine did. Like, Harmony Korine had a way of sort of mixing truth and fiction, especially with, like, his, his creation of rumors. Like, he would say this celebrity had an obsession with eating birthday candles. And that's a lot what this book is like, as far as uh, Marilyn Monroe, if I'm not mistaken, has significant nuclear, like, radiation burn, sorry, from nuclear fallout that happens as the result of the inevitability of World War III, which is another thing the main character is obsessed with in this, which is bringing about World War III. So, I don't know, what else did I want to say? It's also about a doctor by the name of Dr. Nathan who is sort of succumbing to his psychosis. He's low-key obsessed with Liz Taylor's tracheotomy, which, of course, at this point in history was the talk. Everybody was discussing Liz Taylor's tracheotomy in reality, of course. The JFK assassination. He was obsessed with Marilyn Monroe. And, I mean, I think it's cool. William Burroughs. William Burroughs. Oh, switch. William Burroughs. Um, 
does the preface for this, writes the preface for this. But I don't even think Burroughs understood this. I think Burroughs just didn't want to look stupid. So he's like, oh yeah, yeah I get it, mass media, you know? This book is next to impossible to follow in any sort of linear sense. It's like, I've read it four times now, and I get it a little more every time I read it, but in the same breath, I still feel kind of lost. I mean, there's, there's no beginning, and there's no end. There's, there's not a middle. There's, there's nothing about this that's traditional. This is the most... Oh my god, this book is all over the place, and I just, I loved it, because I love being confused by things that I know are smarter than me, and they were written by people who were smarter than me, because then I do my best to attempt to understand them, so that I can be like, yeah, I'm just as smart as they are. So this book was a lot of fun, but I think I, one of my favorite things about this, the, the, the version story that Research released back in 1990 comes with uh, Ballard's annotations off to the side. So when you're reading about some particular thing that happened in 1960-whatever, sometimes during the annotated, the, the annotations, it will clear up whatever that is because, of course, I wasn't alive in 1960-whatever, so I had no way of knowing that that thing happened in the news or pop culture or whatever it was. So that was very cool, too. And I also like how this is set up like a high school textbook. I thought that was really fun too, but I just don't get this book. I understand it in the most fundamental sense. It's about somebody losing their mind who's low-key obsessed with World War III. Before I end this, I've got to read some of the chapter titles. They are so memorable. They're, they're again, they're, they're very Harmony Crane for me, of course, or Harmony Crane is very this, I suppose. So, let's see. There are, of course, 15 of them. The first chapter is the Atrocity Exhibition. Another favorite is the University of Death. And then there's Notes Towards a Mental Breakdown. We got The Great American Nude. The Summer Cannibals. There's a band named after that. Um, Tolerances of the Human Face. You and Me and the Continuum. And um, Plan for the Assassination of Jacqueline Kennedy. Jesus, as if Jackie hadn't been through enough. Uh, Love and Napalm, Export USA, and my personal favorite, Why I Want to Fuck Ronald Reagan. Makes good sense. I think everybody wanted to have sex with Reagan. No, but yeah, so I don't know what the hell this book was. It's a fun read. You're not going to get it. Track it down anyways, because it's cool. And a lot of cool people are involved with the Joy Division, have a song named after it. Exodus released a record about it. So it's fun. It's exciting. But, wow, you are going to feel overwhelmed. And that's where I'm leaving it. So thank you so much for hanging out with me for a little over eight minutes while I discussed uh, J.G. Ballard's 1970 novel, The Atrocity Exhibition. Like always, if you understood this novel, if you understand this novel, tell me. Put it in the comments. Explain it to me fully. I know there's a movie, too but explain this one to me, okay? And if you like this book, please do something nice for somebody like buying this book for them. And don't forget to, like always, you are amazing. And I really appreciate you making it to the end of this incredibly long video regarding this book that not a lot of people even know exists anymore. So, yeah, thanks. Have a good night.